Have you ever imagined losing your vision? For the rest of your life, you cannot see. What would you do? So this is the series, Christ. Let's pray, dear Heavenly Father. In this message, we are going to understand a very important message for our lives. That is a story that Bartimaeus actually is a story about all of us. Help us to see as you helped Bartimaeus to see in the Bible. Everything we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Probably most of us at one or another time have tried to imagine what it would mean to be blind. Maybe when you are a child, uh, you played blind man bluff. So this is a very common game for kids. So the problem is when this is not a joke. The Bible tells us the story of the blind Bartimaeus. In Mark chapter 10 from verse 46 to 47 says, Then they came to Jericho as Jesus and his disciples together with a large crowd were leaving the city. A blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. My dear friends, the dust and the glare of the sun combined with unhygienic habits he spread contagious disease to the eyes. Bartimaeus, probably according to some biblical interpreters, had never seen before. The crowd initially tries to make him shut up. Why would they have tried to silence him? Was it the messianic title attributed to Jesus Christ who offended them? Or was it simple that Jesus' followers did not want to any delay on the journey to the feast? According to the retribution dogma of Judaism, this unfortunate man was simply paying for the sins of his parents or for his own sins. In Leviticus chapter 21 from verse 17 to 21, for typological reasons, the priesthood was forbidden to blind, lame, disfigure or deform men. But that which was something specific and particular was widespread. Among the Pharisees, there was a belief that they were not compelled to pity these people. And some even bragged about throwing stones at them. In the story of Bartimaeus, Jesus rises himself above the religious rules invented to segregate human beings. He stops to demonstrate absolutely tribute and respect to the person in need. With this act, he's saying to that poor man, you have value, you are important. Jesus was a specialist in attributing value to human fragments. As for example, to the thief of the cross, where he makes the Calvary into a baptismal tank. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asks. The obvious, such a question could be understood as a new blow to an old wound. But Bartimaeus rises above any personal pride and responds. I have often wondered why this little story about Jesus and Bartimaeus appears here in Mark. So this is a curious story. What is called in theology of a non sector that is something that does not fit well where it appears. Jesus and his disciples are on the way to Jerusalem, where the tragedy, hostility, and opposition of the authorities of the religious establishment await for him. The arrest, the illegal trial, where he will be cowardly, beaten, humiliated, tortured, and taken to the cross where we think walking distance of him. And then, suddenly, within this context, this narrative appears about a blind man to whom Jesus asks, what do you want me to do for you? 
This is really strange. Bartimaeus is not well. Problems having vision, disorientation, pain, discomfort, do not know the way home, probably abandoned by his helpers, would not have a special care, would not receive more alms, would have to work to survive. But the worst than losing a physical vision, my friends, is to lose the spiritual vision. Have you ever been disappointed to a partner, a boyfriend, girlfriend, a friend, or any other person? As you, I'm sure, I'm also have been disappointed. And why are we blind, emotional, and spiritual? Why can this parable teach us, my friends? And then I feel things we need to consider. And these parables point to truths beyond their own stories. Indeed, such figures are part of us. The way we act and react in our encounter with Christ, this narrative, in a way, is our biography. It's your story. It's my story. Do you know what Mark is really saying in this story of Bartimaeus? Mark is claiming that you and I are blind. In Jesus' terms, you and I cannot see, for we live in darkness. Sunlight penetrates up to a hundred meters from the sea. From here onwards, impenetrable darkness predominates, which is called abyssal deaths. The creatures that are born and live in these regions of darkness in a long time contact with this darkness have the optic nerve atrophied and lost forever. Contact with darkness destroy our vision forever. It's devastating. Being blind is probably what we want. What are you talking about, Pastor? Yeah, that is correct. Being blind is what we all want. After all, it's not so bad, my dear friends, because when we are blind, we cannot see things as they really are. In other words, we are not bothered by seeing things by seeing the truth. Most of the time we do not want to see what we do not like to face. Therefore, it is wise to be blind. It's convenient not to see God and His will, or even to ourselves without our masks we like so much. We do not want to see the betrayal of our spouse, the inconsistencies of our ideologies. We are comfortable with our garbage, and the easiest is only to accept. In the Bible, the same thing happened. The people who saw the Red Sea open later on, they asked to return to Egypt for just some of meat. The same Jezebel who witnessed the power of God in the mountain a few minutes later was trying to persecute and kill God's prophet. The same Caiaphas, who knew that Jesus was the Messiah, killed him instead of acknowledging his sin. I remember a story of a young girl. This girl was very dedicated to God in her church, and her dream was to find a man to marry and have a family. After many years, she couldn't understand why God was not answering her prayer. But after a few years, she found one man. And with this guy, they start dating. After a while, in the beginning of this relationship, this guy reveals that he was in a relationship with a married woman. And because of that adultery, that family was destroyed and in the church they lost their membership. And then he explained that it happened in the past. Also, during their relationship, the girl realizes that that guy treats his mom, his parents with disrespect, treats even her with disrespect in, in front of his friends. Then after a while, he broke up with her. Would it be a God's deliverance? When we are in love, we are blind to see the obvious. I'm sure you won't believe in me, but this girl wanted him back. It's unbelievable, but it happens with all of us. God forgives all 
repent sinners, change adulterers, and all sinners unto new creatures. It's true that the more affinities we have with the other one, we are in love, it's easier to build up the relationship. But they end up coming back again. And with the support of close friends, they finally got married. The result, almost 10 years later of marriage, she didn't know how, what means to be loved, having an affection and even sexual relationship. Hearing from her husband that he prefers to have a relationship with other women than her. And then when she finally gave him a very stable life, a very good life, a very wealthy life, he officially left her to another woman. That girl, that young woman, that wife was completely destroyed. She had to start again. That girl, that young woman had all the signs from heaven, from God to do not engage, to do not get married with that guy. And she ignored because she was blind and her emotional was leading her life and she was rejecting her rational and her spiritual vision. She was completely blind and she ended up destroyed and she had to start her life again. Being humiliated, having to hear from their common friends and her friends that he should left her earlier. But God restored the life of that young girl, transformed her ministry, gave her a real family and husband who loves her. And she has preached the gospel and reached thousands of people to Jesus around the world. Amen. But Jesus, my friends, gives us a solution. And I want to explain in two steps. It's really simple. The first one, relationship with God. The kingdom of God is a relationship with the person of the king who summons for a greater dedication, greater purity, and greater integrity. The vision leads us to an inevitable confrontation with God, with ourselves, and with the things buried in the depths of our darkness. Every human being created in the image of God is endowed with a power akin to that of the Creator. Individuality, power to think and do. The men and women in whom this power is developed are those who bear the responsibilities, who are leaders in enterprise and who influence character. Is it the work of true education to develop this power to train young people to be thinkers and not mere reflectors of other people's thoughts. This is the first step. The second one, my dear friends, faith. It is not wonder that Jesus has on another occasion claimed to have come into the world for judgment so that those who do not see but want to see, see. And those who think they see, remain blind. We need to see, my dear friends, in order to not be only mere puppets in this world of manipulators. We need to see, to take control of our decisions and delegate the course of our life to Jesus Christ, as well as the blind Bartimaeus. Do you want to have the autonomy of your decisions? Do you want to Jesus take control of your life? The decision is in your hands. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we are all born in this world blind. We cannot see. Actually, we don't want to see. But please, God, change our heart, change our mind, our life. Help us to see with your eyes. Help us to live according to your will and to share your love, to share your hope to other people's lives. Everything we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And remember, this gospel of the kingdom will be preached for the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come.